ABC News. Around the world and into your home, the stories that touch your life. This is 2020 Wednesday with Diane Sawyer and Charles Gibson. Tonight, the youngest children, one moment sweet and harmless, the next in violent rages. Uncontrollable outbursts. Even their own parents are afraid of them. He stabbed me in the back a couple of times with knives. As a baby. As a baby. With parents' consent, we put cameras in their homes and watched startling images. Children out of control, lashing out at their own families. How was I going to protect my family from this three-year-old? What would you do if your child did this? Stop fighting! Stop! Stop! Robert, stop it! Oh. It actually broke some of the skin. Few people recognize this serious illness in children and the bizarre, unpredictable behavior that is one of its symptoms. Can it be controlled before it's too late? Deborah Roberts with a story for every parent. Raging Kids. From Times Square in New York, Diane Sawyer and Charles Gibson. Good evening and welcome to 2020 Wednesday. Diane and I are delighted that you have joined us this evening. We are about to show you something you have rarely seen before on television. Terrifying, heartbreaking video of parents afraid of their own children. Children whose moods fluctuate wildly and dangerously. Tonight, mothers at their wit's end, crying out for someone to help them. They allowed us to put cameras into their homes to show what life is like when a child suffers from a frightening disorder that makes behavior unpredictable and sometimes violent. Until recently, no one thought it affected children, but as Deborah Roberts reports, for the parents of these children, family life is a daily test of love and endurance. They are the wide-eyed faces of innocence, beautiful children, typical in every way except for one thing. He was mad at me. He took a pen and stabbed me full force in the back. These small children can be so aggressive they frighten even their own parents. I, I thought she was possessed. They are the youngest of the mentally ill, kids who have shown signs of instability since the very beginning. <laughs> Robbie's been aggressive since as long as I can remember. Tammy Wilson adopted Robbie, now six years old, just days after his birth. Born to her teenage daughter who was unable to care for him, Tammy took in her blue-eyed seven-pound grandson without hesitation. But within months, she sensed there was something very different about him. He didn't want to be held. When you try to hold him and love on him, he would scream. And as he grew, she says, he became easily agitated, even aggressive. She worried that something was wrong. The doctors dismissed her fears. He stabbed me in the back a couple of times with knives. As a baby? As a baby. Finally, when he was two, Robbie was diagnosed hyperactive and prescribed Ritalin, a stimulant. But Tammy thinks it only made him worse. She remembers one horrifying night finding Robbie standing over her sleeping older son holding a knife. I started talking real calm to him and asking him what he was doing. And the only thing he could tell me was that he has to kill him. He said, I have to kill him. And what did you think at that point? How was I going to keep this child at home? How was I going to protect my family from this three-year-old? After running a battery of tests, psychiatric experts made a shocking conclusion. No, you're not getting that. Hey, stop. That's just... Stop it. Tammy's son was suffering from bipolar disorder, a mental illness usually diagnosed only in teenagers and adults and known commonly as manic depression. In children, it's likely to show up with intense mood swings. Like yesterday, we played and we laughed and we had so much fun. And then the next 30 minutes, he got a stick and started hitting me with it and, you know, poking at me. And so it can change so suddenly. Give me the bell. That's mine. Give me the bell. Stop it. Stop! Children just don't manifest the same cycling pattern that adults do. 
Psychiatrist Dmitry Papalos is one of a growing number of experts who now believe that bipolar disorder is as common in children as it is in adults. They are you know, goofy, giddy, you know, uh, elated for brief parts of the day. Then they'll be very, very irritable and oppositional and then very sad and depressed. Kelly Farrell Wells' five-year-old daughter Mary Pat has also been diagnosed as bipolar. Like Tammy Wilson, she began noticing the strange, even angry behavior soon after her daughter's birth. How would she display the anger? Screaming? Looks? You know, and that's frightening when you get a look from a baby who's 11 months old. And as Mary Pat got older, her behavior became even more disturbing. I would be physically abused every day. So would my son. What would she do? Slap, bite, kick, scratch, uh, throw things. And she was less than two? Mm-hmm. And she did it so she could see Mommy cry. Krista Longshoreyer is living a similar life. When she realized her five-year-old son, Connell, was out of control, she blamed herself. He raged and we'd spend six hours on his bed just, oh, I, just holding him while he tried to get free and bite me and kick me. And, and I'm sitting here going, what am I doing wrong? Like so many other children suffering from bipolar disorder, Connell has also had violent outbursts with knives. Then one day when he was three, he took a butcher knife out of the kitchen drawer and he tried to stab himself with it. I grabbed it from him, he wrestled it back from me. And that's the one thing that I don't think people realize is how strong these children get. You're not getting on that, the buggy. Yes, I will. Don't. Of the three children we observed, Robbie was by far the most aggressive. Yet doctors were slow in diagnosing bipolar disorder, even though Tammy, her older daughter and teenage son, all suffer from it. Dr. Papalo says the late discovery is not uncommon. I think most of them uh, are diagnosed with a number of other conditions, uh, like attention deficit disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder. I think very often the bipolar disorder is missed. I know you do. Then it Robbie does suffer from hyperactivity and other problems. He's been hospitalized five times for psychiatric care. He visits a psychiatrist once a month, and he's heavily medicated. See, he takes two, four, five pills every morning, three at lunch, one at four, and three of a nine. Medication helps some. Still, life with Robbie is a constant struggle. A struggle Tammy's older son and husband couldn't handle. They moved out. If you're very good, we might get one when you leave. Left behind are Tammy, Robbie, and two-year-old Dakota. I don't want Dakota hurt. I don't. I mean, I'm up all hours of the night every and everything to, to make sure that my daughter is protected. And in a cabinet, ta-da, there we go. Tammy is constantly on alert, careful to keep knives and other sharp objects out of Robbie's reach. But that's not always enough precaution. The trunk of her car is loaded with toys she's had to confiscate. Uh, this one it caught, got taken away from him on Halloween. He busted a little boy's mouth and nose with one of these. Tear it up. I'll beat the hell out of you. Hey, that's not the way you talk to I'll me. Be... Little Dakota is so accustomed to Robbie's outbursts, she barely notices them. Still, as Tammy struggles to protect her youngest child, she worries about any possible long-term emotional damage she could suffer. Give me the shoes. Give me the shoes. Robbie rages out of control several times a day. Don't bite. Don't bite. You're going to get it. Don't bite. You're going to get it. It can be frightening to watch. I'm going to kill Coda, Mama. No, you're not going to kill Coda. Yes, I am. I am if I want. It's just impossible or, or just amazing to believe that a two- or three- or four-year-old child is even capable of such violent urges. I, I think you're right. I think it's hard to believe, but it, it is the case. The violence and the aggressive impulses are there. These children just don't have the capacity to, uh, to rein them in. Dr. Papala says many children with bipolar disorder experience hallucinations. Listen to Robbie talk about conversations with the devil. What kind of things does the devil tell you? Um, um, bad stuff. Like what? Um, cut your mommy's head off. These are drawings done by children with bipolar disorder. 
Most seem to have a preoccupation with violence and pursuit. There is something that takes over that uh, might be some powerful electrical discharge in the part of the brain that actually modulates aggressive behavior. And for Robbie, that causes problems in his kindergarten class nearly every day. Why'd you bite the kid? He's in my way. He was in your way? So did you ask him to move? No, he made me mad. Uh, when you get mad, how do you feel? Mean. Robbie's going to still be sitting in time. Yeah. Because... Most of Robbie's aggression is directed towards his mother. If Tammy lets her guard down just for a second, the results can be devastating. Stop biting! Stop! Stop! Robert, stop it! They had actually broke some of the skin. Tell you what, it hurt. <sighs> it's really hard. Because I love this little guy. Friends who rarely visit anymore have urged Tammy to put her son in a long-term care facility. But she refuses. This is killing me. It really is. There's so much sadness in my own heart for my son. Many people from the outside looking in wonder, how could these parents stay with these children? How could they ha raise other children in the home and, and, and watch these other children wreak havoc throughout the house? I think these parents are heroes. Uh, I cannot believe being in a house and dealing daily with the kinds of assaults that they have to deal with. Dr. Papalos and his wife Janice, a writer, have interviewed hundreds of families who are coping with bipolar disorder. They've written a book designed as a guide to help others recognize this often misunderstood mental illness. There have been days where I, I have said that if the police showed up from my door right now, I'd say, take him. Just take him. I can't take this anymore. If anybody, anybody abused me one third of the amount in one day that my at, you know, then two or three year old did, I'd leave. I'd get up and leave. Do you sometimes want to just give up? Yes. You have to wait. It's not our turn. What makes matters worse is the isolation they feel, especially in public. Look what happened with Robbie and Tammy in the checkout line at the grocery store. Now, you're not getting the cookies. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. That is not our cookies. I need it. Hey, I'm not... You're... Yeah. I'm really sorry. How humiliating That's is it fine. to wind up in the grocery store on the floor restraining him? And other shoppers are staring at you. It is the most embarrassing thing. And you learn to not look at people in the eyes. You know? Because sometimes you just want to look at them and say, please understand. I night. Tammy Wilson says nights are the toughest time. She keeps multiple locks on her doors, mostly to keep her son inside. Do you worry, Tammy, that he's capable of serious harm? As he gets older, yeah. I think Robbie will be capable of some really serious stuff. I mean, I've already been told that Robbie's homicidal. But experts say that's not the case with all children who are bipolar. Many of them do well on medication. However, if left untreated or misdiagnosed, some become hopelessly violent and wind up in the criminal justice system. I don't want Robbie to become another Columbine thing. I don't want to wait till he's 14 or 16 to say, ooh, I wish I had to put him somewhere. How likely is it that a lot of the children that we hear about in the news today who have gone on violent rampages could indeed be bipolar children? Kids who have bipolar disorder have tremendous problems regulating their aggression amongst other impulses. Um, uh, I would not want to portray them as uh, you know, future murderers. The key, he says, is finding the right combination of drugs. Mood stabilizers like lithium and Tegretol have been known to work well in curbing aggressive behavior in bipolar children. But many parents say their children have been placed on stimulants and antidepressants only to make them psychotic and more violent. We have medications that, that can treat bipolar disorder. It is not a curable condition at this point, but it is definitely treatable and manageable. Tammy Wilson is determined to find a way to stop her son from suffering, 
Each night she spends hours searching the Internet while waiting for Robbie to fall asleep. His doctors have yet to find the right combination of medications to truly help him. I don't think anybody would blame you, Tammy, if you chose to commit him to some facility. Why are you so determined to keep him with you? I'm not saying that Robbie will never have to be committed. I don't know. But not now. Not at five. As long as I can physically help Robbie, I'll, I will be there for him. I can't give up on him. I really can't.